Hello Sigmas, we know from our previous video on the potential energy that let's say we have a, a particle, right, a P, and a force acts on this particle in this direction. And if the particle gets displaced in this some direction at an angle theta with F uh, by an amount delta R, then what we can do is uh, define the potential energy in this manner. F dot delta R would be equal to the change in potential energy that is the potential energy at B minus the potential energy at A. In this equation this delta R is nothing but uh, delta X X cap plus delta Y Y cap plus delta Z Z cap and this F is uh, nothing but F of X x cap plus f of y y cap plus f of z z cap and what we have here is the dot product of the two and hence uh, we are what we are going to get is f of x times delta x plus f of y times uh, delta y plus uh, f of z times uh, delta z is going to be equal to negative now this is the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy and hence that is nothing but the change in potential energy uh, between uh, the point B and the point A, right? These uh, particles, this is, I've assumed a small displacement, but if it has uh, covered some uh, path like this from point A to point B, then uh, it will be given by the potential energy at B minus times the potential energy of B minus the potential energy at A which is nothing but the change in potential energy. So I'm going to write it in this manner delta U where U is obviously a function of X, Y and Z as we know from our previous video that the potential energy is a function of the position of the particle. Now what we are going to do is we are going to assume that uh, y and z are constant that is uh, there is no change in the y and z direction which means the displacement of the particle is only in the x direction. So let us say that uh, y is some constant let's say y naught and uh, z is also a constant let's say z naught then this would imply that uh, delta y is equal to zero and this one would imply that delta z is equal to zero and if uh, these two are zero then i can uh, write this equation uh, something like this since a uh, delta y and delta z are zero i will be left with f of x delta x equal to minus delta u x comma now since uh, y naught and z naught are constant it will be a function of uh, y naught comma z naught right uh, here i had y and z but they are equal to y naught and z naught so i have replaced uh, y and z with y naught and z naught and this would imply that f of x is equal to minus delta u of uh, x y naught and z naught divided by delta x. Now over here I want you to notice a very interesting thing. You know from my previous videos every time every time we had something like this what we used to do is take limit delta x tending to zero and then convert the differences into derivatives. But over here I want you to notice that this potential energy is also a function of y and z. But we have held y and z constant and allowed uh, or the displacement of the particle to be only in a particular direction that is only along the x direction. And uh, hence what we will get if we take the limit, let me take the limit first. So there was a negative sign, limit delta x tending to zero delta u upon delta x of uh, x comma y naught comma z naught right if i take this limit of uh, only in a single direction that is only along the x then this is defined as the partial derivative so this is known as a partial derivative and it is uh, symbolically written as uh, something like this This quantity, not the negative sign, but only this quantity, I call this dou. 
different people call it uh, by different names and people call it Dell but uh, as we are going to see there is something else so I call this do so this can be called do u upon do x that is the partial derivative of u with respect to x now let me quickly tell you how partial derivatives work as we had assumed while defining this partial derivative what you have to do is uh, take derivative only with respect to x and treat a uh, y and z as constant because this u is not only a function of x but also y and z so let's say you want to take the partial derivative of uh, this function x y and z with respect to x then y and z are constants that is you have to treat them as constants and constants can be taken out of the derivative so what happens is you get y z do x upon do x and the derivative of x is uh, with respect to x is 1 so you will be left with y z so you take derivative of only a function of x with respect to x and treat all other variables as constants and hence if you have let's say dou y upon dou x that is the partial derivative of y with respect to x that would be 0 because y here is a constant with respect to x what we have to do next is uh, repeat the same procedure for the y and z directions that is here i had f of x equal to minus do u upon do x and if i repeat the same procedure for the y and z direction that is i assume that the particle displaces only along the y direction and hold x and z direction as constant or what i can do is assume that the particle moves only along the z direction and uh, hold x and y as constants then what i would get is uh, three equations uh, first one i have already told you f of x is equal to minus do u upon do x similarly you will get f of y equal to minus uh, do u upon do y and f of z is equal to minus do u upon do z and hence what we get the other components of course so what if i displace the particle now in a general direction right if i have my cartesian coordinate over here let me draw a small one and if i if the particle let me draw it with another color that this green dot is a particle and if i exert a force on this particle in some random direction right and it also displaces in some uh, random direction delta r uh, then what i can do is take the components of the forces and displacements uh, along the three coordinate axis you already know that then in that uh, condition what we they will act in this manner the force components are going to be exactly these the partial derivative of u with respect to x with a negative sign and similarly for the other directions if that is the case then what we can do is uh, write the total force on uh, the particle as uh, you know we can write it as f of x x cap plus f of y y cap plus f of z z cap and uh, then what i can do is let me take uh, the negative sign common uh, and i can write them as uh, do u upon do x and there will be x cap over here because f of x is do u upon do x but there is x cap so do u upon do x x cap plus do u upon do y y cap plus do u upon do z z cap and then i can write this equation something like this do you uh, let me take a u outside the bracket so i will be left with uh, this and i will take you outside the bracket this quantity that we have inside the bracket over here is written like this this is known as the del operator now before we speak of the del operator you need to know what operators now a derivative is a operator uh, what a operator does is it uh, acts on a function that the derivative uh, will act on a function and uh, this uh, these operators follow a certain rule like the derivative what is it it is limit delta h tending to zero uh, f of uh, x plus uh, delta h 
minus f of x upon delta h right it follows a certain rules but we every time do not solve this we already know the rules so these uh, derivative uh, follows certain rules and so does every operator that exists it acts on a function with and follows some rules to give another function right this will give f dash of x which is the derivative of x but this del operator is not just uh, any operator it is oh, very very special because it is not only an operator but it is also a vector and that is what makes the del operator so very special this del operator is a vector operator that is it is an operator and also a vector because you can see that it has these unit vectors over there and hence uh, these uh, del operator is a vector operator and hence what we can do now is uh, write the force the net force on the object as the negative gradient of potential energy this is uh, what we were seeking in this uh, video a relationship between the force and potential energy, not only in one dimensions, but in all the dimensions, that is in three dimensions. Now, if a force can be written in this manner as the gradient of uh, your, the potential energy, yes, I forgot to tell you what a gradient is. Let me quickly tell you what a gradient is. Now, see, as I uh, told you already in my previous videos, functions can not only be scalars, but they can also be vectors. And here the del operator is acting on uh, uh, the potential energy, which is a scalar. Now this del operator could also act on uh, vectors, functions which are vectors, but that is not a subject of this video that we are going to look into when we study electrodynamics and I'm going to release the video soon. But for now, you need to understand what a gradient is. Whenever the del operator acts on a scalar, that operation is known as gradient. So gradient is nothing but the del operator acting on some scalar to give another vector, right? Because a vector times a scalar is a vector. So the del operator can act on the potential energy to give us force uh, with uh, negative sign of course but that uh, really does not matter but what is the physical intuition is that the gradient of uh, the potential energy gives us the force so that was about the gradient yes uh, so where was i if we can write a force uh, in this uh, manner that is as gradient of potential energy then what i can do is let me call this equation two and let me call where is that equation that we begin with this one let me call this equation one actually here we had a finite displacement delta r but we know that obviously for infinitesimal displacements we can convert that delta r into an integral and hence what i can write it as as we have seen in our, on our video on potential energy that we can write it in this manner as an integral to a to b as minus delta u right now this is a negative uh, delta u on the right hand side but what we have on the left hand side is f dot dr and we have just derived what f is f is the negative gradient of u and hence i can write this integral in this manner now you can easily see that uh, the negatives will cancel out and what we'll be left with is this equation. Now I want you to notice a very interesting similarity between uh, the del operator and the derivatives, right? If we have the integral, let's say we have some integral of uh, d by dx of some function of f of x, uh, this integral, let's say, goes from a to b, dx, then we know that this is equal to f of b minus f of a. And that is what delta u is, right? It is u of b minus u of a. That is what the change in potential energy is. And hence, notice a very, very interesting similarity between 
the gradient and the derivatives. This gradient is acting like derivatives in three dimensions. Here we have the derivative only in one dimension that is uh, dx. But this del operator uh, when acted upon the potential energy and then take an integral over dr which is again in 3D. Right, this is also in three dimensions just like how dx is in one dimension dr is in three dimensions so when first taken the del operator that is when first taken the gradient and then taken the integral that is a line integral so when you first operate u with a gradient and then you take the line integral it gives you the change in u similar to what we have over here in one dimension. And hence, uh, you can easily see that this gradient is nothing but derivatives in three dimensions. And that was all about this very interesting videos about forces and its relationship with potential energy. And we saw how it gives rise to this very, very interesting vector operator known as the del operator, which is analogous to the derivative just in three dimensions. If you want me to make more such interesting videos on physics, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, like this video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>